I want to tell a story about Margaret Stringer, a modern day missionary who served the Lord for 40 years in Papua New Guinea on the southern shore of West Papua New Guinea. Uh, she was a linguist. She translated two unwritten languages, translating the New Testament for these people. Her story is uh, beautifully told by herself in a short, maybe 30-minute video. We put the link down below. If you'd like to listen to it, you will find it well worth your while. A cute little story that's not in her book, but she told the story how when she was doing translation work, a terrible storm came in. They didn't have glass in their windows. Uh, the rain came through and ruined 80 to 90 percent of the labor she had put into in translation work. And she was just so disheartened and she went to bed that night and then uh, as the storm continued, uh, something fell off the wall and hit her in the head. And she just felt like, Lord, have you forgotten me? And uh, she fumbled for the light, the flashlight, and she looked to see what it was that had hit her. And it was a little motto that said, he cares for you. <laughs> well, anyway, she had a great sense of humor. She was a happy soul and uh, now gone to heaven. But anyway, she served in this village of Sango, and they heard of some villages further north than they were, villages that were virtually unreachable except perhaps by canoe up the, the rivers, but uh, Missionary Aviation Fellowship was able to take them up. But this was essentially swampland, and the helicopter had to hover some distance above the ground, and they jumped out onto logs and so on. And almost immediately, it was interesting, she said that the pilot was new, and uh, he he saw this longhouse and thought this would be a great place to land right by the longhouse. She said he didn't realize this is where they took people to cannibalize them. Uh, but in any case, as soon as they landed, all of these naked men ran out and grabbed them and started to drag them to the longhouse. And it was quite dicey for a little bit. But anyway, the marvelous stories the ins and outs as they befriended these people and almost were killed by them several times. But uh, they explained to them the story of the gospel, how God who created them lives in a village up above the sky. And in his village, uh, no one ever dies. No one's ever sick. They don't kill each other. And, and how God wanted us to live with him in that wonderful village. But uh, he couldn't let anything sinful enter, and because we were sinners, we couldn't go there. But then God had opened a path for them to, to join him. He had a son, and his son had come to earth and become a human, and how he had been taken and killed, and, and then how he rose from the dead and had gone back to the village above the sky, and and God was inviting them, if they would be honest with him about the sins they had committed and trust uh, in God's Son, that he would also take them to heaven. Uh, just a remarkable story, and you will just love to hear all the details, but they were in this village of, I think it's called Vacabe or Vacabao, and the chief who was the chief because he had cannibalized more people than anyone else. Uh, he seemed to have no interest. He never left their side, but he seemed to have no interest. But the uh, assistant chief, a man named Bido, who was the assistant chief because he'd killed a man who tried to kill the chief, he was fascinated by the, the message. She tells the story how on one occasion someone had come to her and said, what is the name of that man who was killed? And when she she told him, uh, Jesus, he, he pointed to his forehead and he said, I will put it right here and not forget it again. Well, the thrilling story of how some of these folks were converted and, and eventually this assistant chief, he was supposed to go out hunting, but he came back early 
and came into, into the hut that had been built for them in the village. And he acknowledged, he said, did God see me when I killed those people? Did he, did he see me when I stole those women? When he opened this man's chest with an ax, did he see me? Yes, he saw you. Yes, he saw you. But, but this is why we came to tell you that, that he loves you, Beto, and, and he wants to forgive you. He wants you to live with him in his village beyond the sky. And so she said, Beto began to pray, and he said something like this, God, I've killed and eaten people. I've stolen women. And, and I chopped that man's chest open with an ax. I, I just don't want you to think about that anymore. And she said, as I listened to that, and I thought, this is the gospel. He takes these things and puts them into the sea of his forgetfulness. And as I listened to this story, I thought of a scripture. It's found in the Psalms, Psalm 74, in verse 20, and it's the longing of, of the heart of, of the people of God. Have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Now, of course, today we don't quite mean it the way it was meant there, to protect the Jewish people from all those who would seek to destroy them. But we do say to the Lord, have respect to the covenant. See the blood. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And here, these intrepid missionaries going to the dark places of the earth that are full of the habitations of cruelty and taking the story of the covenant love of God, of the shed blood the basis of the new covenant which God offers to the human race. And here were these people, one after another, including the chief who put their trust in Christ. And I, I was very much touched, you know, recently our daughter has had twin boys and another daughter's had twin girls and our daughter-in-law, a little baby, in the matter of a few weeks. And uh, Beto, the assistant chief, they had twins. And he said, you know, for the first time, we didn't kill our twins. This was the first set of twins that survived in this village of Vacabo. You know, to see the power of the gospel, transforming lives, changing these people, and the joy as they arrived on one of their trips, as they came up from Sengo, and the people were so excited and took them. They had built a little lean-to, a little hut that was to be the place where they gathered as a church. And I tell you what it must do for the heart of God to hear these people who've been in the darkness, those who sat in darkness, have seen a great light. And we thank God for people like Margaret Stringer, who was willing to go in to the dark places of the earth that are full of the habitations of cruelty to bring to them the message of the new covenant that God could forgive them because Christ's blood had been shed. He had died and rose again and God was offering them. He had opened up a new path for them from their village to God's village so that they might live with him forever.